All right, so there are two topics that I would like to cover in this video. And the first one being how to learn to code and uh, kind of what resources to use and uh, how to structure your learning. And the second being how to start making money from it as fast as possible. Okay, so this is my advice for anyone who wants to learn to code. And uh, the first step would be to try to figure out where you'd like to be working or what you'd like to be doing. And the way that I do this is by going to a website called Stack Overflow. And basically there's a section on there if you go to stackoverflow.com slash jobs, where a lot of companies post different job offers. And in these job offers, there's usually also a list of requirements for that position. So basically you could browse through that and see if you can find something that seems interesting and then go through the requirements. And uh, that would be a really good uh, starting point to aim for. And uh, even if you do that and don't find anything, don't worry, because uh, I personally, when I got started, didn't know what I wanted to do. So uh, I will also cover, of course, how to learn to code if you have no idea where you want to go. The next step would be to pick a programming language. And basically, if you know where you want to work, then pick the most commonly used language in that area. And if you don't know what that is, then go to Stack Overflow again and just look at different similar jobs and uh, the requirements for those and try to see what the most commonly used language is and then pick that one and learn that and if you don't know where you want to go then I would suggest learning Java but I also want to add that it doesn't matter too much what language you pick because if you learn one language really well then the concepts will transfer to multiple other languages and you'll be able to learn other languages super easily. And this is because the steps to learning a programming language is going to be the same across all languages. And the way that I would suggest it is start by learning how to create variables and then uh, learn about objects and uh, then about methods. And lastly, I'll look at some data structures like stacks, arrays and lists. And I would suggest learning from a book because generally books are usually really well structured and they're also compact and really cheap. And personally, I think it's one of the best ways to learn because they take you from point A to point B in a really clear way, which means that there's a clear start and a clear finish. And in my personal opinion, online courses are not as great because they kind of move a bit too quickly and skim over some of the fundamentals, which means that at the end of the course, it's kind of harder to keep up, but maybe I've just tried the wrong courses. Once you've learned the fundamentals of a programming language, you'll be more well equipped to learn other programming languages. And you'll also be more efficient at uh, finding answers to your questions since you'll know more, so you'll be able to ask better questions. All right, so now we get into the making money part. And from now on, the making money and learning to code will be intertwined in this video. So now the next step would be to learn Git and how GitHub works. And for those of you who don't know, Git is a version control system that pretty much all companies use when building software. And you can think of this as a system that allows multiple developers to work on the same project at the same time. So from this point forward, I would suggest that every time you write a piece of code, add it to your GitHub account. And there are a couple really good reasons for this, so stick with me. The first reason is that a lot of companies use it and it's pretty much an industry standard which means that at some point you're probably going to have to learn it anyway and uh, the second reason and maybe the most important reason is that if i'm a recruiter and i go to your github account then straight away i get a view of all the public commits that you've made in the last year you can think of a commit as a save so a save of the code that you're currently working on so what does this mean? Well, basically it means to a recruiter, they can see how often you code. And uh, seeing someone's GitHub that's covered in commits will basically ensure the recruiter that you actually do code a lot. And uh, you can probably imagine that to a recruiter that maybe have never talked to you, never met you, and have just read a short resume, uh, this would actually give them some sort of confidence that at the very least, you know how Git works, and most likely you do code a fair bit. And this can be a huge advantage when applying for jobs, 
and basically you can just link your github account on your resume and they will see this all right so now for the third step and that would be to start working on personal projects by far the best way to learn to code is by working on a personal project which is why i believe that you only need a very basic understanding of a programming language to be able to start on a personal project the reason that this is the third step is that i do believe you need some theory not necessarily in order to be able to build something with code at all but in order to build something with code relatively effectively so just having that basic fundamental knowledge of a programming language will help you increase your efficiency when trying to solve different problems that you'll inevitably run into in your personal projects each personal project will do two things first it will show that you like to code and you like to do it in your spare time which is really important to a lot of employers and the second being that it will show kind of what you can do with code so maybe you build an app or maybe you build a website now the employer will be able to see that you know how to work with web development and mobile development and maybe even implement some sort of specific feature that shows off a skill that you have and uh, i think that once you have one or two projects then you can basically start applying for jobs and another suggestion would be to add your personal projects to your LinkedIn profile because a lot of employers will be looking at your LinkedIn profile and on there you can basically make kind of a nice display of all the different uh, projects that you've done. And when starting to apply for jobs, just keep in mind that even though you may not have a lot of experience, there are a lot of jobs out there for software developers, even with limited experience. Another piece of advice would be to ask different business owners. So maybe a friend of yours owns a business or a family member or really anyone and see if you can, if they have a website that needs redesign or maybe they don't have a website and they need a website. And basically you can build this for them probably for free, but if you can get paid for it, then that's great but uh, basically build the website and then you can add that to your resume and you can say that I built this website for this company and uh, here's how it looks. And this can also be very powerful when uh, applying for jobs. Or if you wanna get into freelance work, then uh, I would suggest of course doing the previous step as well, but then go and post something on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and ask your friends and followers if anyone needs a website built or an app and uh, maybe you can start making some money that way and you could also go to websites like uh, freelancer.com or upwork.com and there are lots of different websites for this and um, get started that way all right so that's my advice i hope you got some new ideas out of this and uh, that's it for this video <laughs>